Breaking news right now, a Norton Shores woman accused of abusing and killing her 15 year old son over a year ago has been found guilty. Shanda Vanderark refused to return to the stand today after answering questions from the prosecutor yesterday and even vomited after being shown photos of her son from hours before he died. Her defense attorney said Vanderark waived her right to attend, citing medical distress. Their tenure side, Jeremiah Brown, has been in the courtroom all day and joins us now live with more. J.D., what can you tell us? Well, Elena, after an hour of deliberation, the jury had their verdict and found her guilty of first-degree murder and first-degree child abuse. Today, both the prosecution and the defense made their closing arguments to the jury, the prosecution reiterating just the extreme and unusual punishment she subjugated um, Timothy Ferguson to, including feeding him hot sauce on bread, starvation, and even restraining his hands and legs with cuffs. The defense said that she was not aware of that the punishments would ultimately lead to his death. This morning, the prosecution showed a video to those in the court taken from a camera Vander Ark had placed in the small room that that detectives say was really a small closet that Timothy was placed in. The video showed Vander Ark and her son finding Timothy, who was unresponsive. 18 minutes passed before they called 911. Vander Ark can be heard telling her son Paul to help place him in another room and to make it look like he was found there. She is heard telling police that Timothy was on a hunger strike, which yesterday Yesterday, Paul testified saying was a lie. And make no mistake, he was a prisoner in that home. We give prisoners rights. Timothy had none of those because the person charged with his care and custody refused them. Kept him locked up in the basement of that home with motion sensors and alarms to make sure he didn't even go upstairs, let alone anywhere else. Found. The prosecution also recounting statements from medical experts who noted that Timothy was 69 pounds when he was found, when the average 15-year-old male weighs 132 pounds, saying that Timothy was desperate enough to eat frozen chicken nuggets and uncooked hamburger. They said he was also found with signs of hypothermia in July, pointing to the ice bath he was also subject to. The defense appealed to the jury, stating that text messages lack emotion and situational context, and that yesterday Vander Ark read distorted images of past events. He also pointed to her personal circumstances to claim that she was not aware of how her actions would lead to his death. January 29th will be the date of her sentencing, according to the judge. He has also revoked, uh, he has also, uh, revoked bond and said that she is required by law to be present for her sentencing and to listen to victim impact statements. Live in Muskegon County, I'm Jeremiah Brown, 13 on your side. How old, ma'am? <laughs> I'm Officer Stefanich. Right now we got some people coming over to talk to you, okay? You have another son inside the house? I do. Are they sleeping still right now? One of them is, yeah. The 20 year old's awake. He's 20? No, the 20 year old's awake. Okay. He's been. He's been wearing really loose clothes the last couple of weeks. He's really skinny. He's really skinny, and I didn't notice till this morning because he wouldn't, like, I asked him if he's okay, and he would not answer me. Like, he's 15. He's been... He, he's, he has autism? Yeah. Like a high-functioning... Yeah. <laughs> I just... I had no clue how bad it was. Oh, my God. Like I said, he, just, he did this back in... Oh, uh, my husband's stroke was January 3rd. Mm -hmm. So he did this back in, I don't know, second week of January for almost three weeks. And then he finally, he ate, um, uh, he ate something last night. I can't remember what it was now, I'm sorry. It's okay. Where's your, where's your husband now? He's down at his parents' house because he can't get in our house because the crew, he can't get up the stairs. Oh. And nobody's answering the phone at their house. Oh, um, did Oh. Um, you can go back in the house if you want, but I can't, I got to keep the, the basement secure. You can't oh. go down there. Okay. I got it. I just, I, just, I had no idea. I would have taken a in or something. Oh. Now you said the last time you saw him was 530 this morning. Yeah. Did he say anything? He had fallen out of bed. At 5.30? Yeah. 
You sure it wasn't <laughs> earlier? I mean, it's possible. I thought it was 5.30, but I wasn't super awake. I heard a thunk, and I came down, and he's kind of laying on his side, kind of like, what the heck? And, um, and I picked, I, uh, I, yeah, I reached out, and he, he, I'm sorry. That's all right. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Um, yeah. And I reached out, and he pulled himself up, and I asked him if he's okay, and I just asked if he hit his head. He said, no, I think I hit my, my, my knees on my chest, I think. He couldn't, obviously, he couldn't tell me how he fell. Um, oh, my God. No, I don't know what to do. Oh, my God. He said, it's okay. And then. Do you have their family here in town? Well, it was solid, but they're not answering. Yeah. My, my father-in-law's an attorney. Best thing to do is surround yourself with family. Help you get, because, you know, right now you're going through it by yourself and you, you, you get overwhelmed. I have no idea. How could I have missed that? Mm. <laughs> he's been wearing baggy, I mean, he's wearing a hoodie for crying out loud and I just didn't, <laughs> his face didn't look like that. What the heck? <sighs> now, what's your first name, ma'am? Shonda, S-H-A-N-D-A. <sighs> and what's your what's your last name? Is it Ferguson also? No, it's Vander Ark. V A N D E R Space Capital A R K. What's no, your... That's why I made that's why I asked him to eat last night because his face started looking a little thin. I'm like, okay mm-hmm. enough. And he wouldn't show I'm like, let me see, hold your shirt up. And he wouldn't hold his shirt up. He wouldn't do anything. Did he get real skinny last time too? Yes. The only reason I know is because my uh my seven-year-old walked in on him accidentally when he was in the shower downstairs. Uh-huh. And then my seven-year-old comes up and he's like, Mama, Timothy's really skinny. I was like, oh. Was that this time or last time? That was last time. That was like first week of February is when DC discovered that. Mm-hmm. And I told him he was either going to start eating every multiple times a day or I was taking him to the hospital and he didn't want to go to the hospital. So he, was, so he ended up eating on his own. Yes. Okay. And then, so this this last time, was it because your husband's in the wasn't home? Well, he hasn't been home since January third. But okay. he had a um, he had a, a grand mal seizure. God, it's been three weeks ago now. And it was right right after that. He was he actually mentioned he was hungry the day his stepdad or his dad and stepmom called to tell us they were divorced and moving to Florida last week. Where do they live? They, they lived in Oklahoma, but they moved to outside of Jacksonville, Florida, and they're not answering their phone either. Okay. And that's his biological father? Yeah. Yeah. He moved up here with us last May because his dad couldn't handle him. And he's been great. I mean. Last May, like, as in strikes. May of last year or this yeah, year? Yeah, May of last year. Okay. May of last year. And he goes to school and everything he was? I've been homeschooling him online um, because it's high-functioning. Um, it's, he's just done better at it. I can show you his grade report online. I've got all the, this online. Okay. Curriculum. Is he doing okay? Yeah, he was, I mean, he was failing math, which is not unusual, but he was passing everything else. Hmm. What's his date of birth? It was 8 6 of 2006. I should have, he just, I tried to check in the last few days and he just wouldn't let me anywhere near him. He didn't want a kiss, a hug, nothing. Probably didn't want you to give him a hug because then you could he, tell that I he was. I would have known. Like I, he, I told him he was stumbling a little bit last night, but he's not the most coordinated kid in the world. And he said it was okay. And then he ate. What was the last time he ate? You think? Last night. No, Gabriel, keep him up there. Um, he ate. He ate toast. Um, there's two. There's a seven-year-old and a 20-year-old. The seven-year-old was asleep. I guess he's not now. Oh, my God. I just made him eat. I feel like such a failure. You, you see there's food in the house. Oh, my God. Where, where, was, where does he sleep at? Right there? In that, yeah, room? That, that loft bed. Okay. So notice there's another loft bed in another room. Yeah, that's room. my seven-year-old, but he's been sleeping with me since he's, the, the, the youngest is my husband's and mine. 
Mm-hmm. And he's been sleeping when he since his daddy had a stroke. Okay. Because he's scared. And um, I offered to let Timothy move in there because, but he he wanted to stay in his bed. Oh my god. No, I just should have made a beat. I should have done something. Okay. And they really hide that from me like that. They can hide a lot of things from oh you. Oh my gosh! What's what's your date of birth, ma'am? Uh, Three thirteen of seventy nine. What's your phone number? Um, I'm sorry. Here you go. Four zero five five three seven sixty nine hundred. Okay. You can call, make some calls if you want again. I tried. I'll try again in a minute. I'm sorry. I, just, I don't know what no, to do. I, nothing I can say could help you through this, you know. It's, I, I, the best thing is to do is, is just bring your loved ones in and just. And his baby brother doesn't know what's going on. And he, I'm going to have to tell him eventually, but I don't want to yet. Oh, my gosh. But we have to investigate every every death. Um, <laughs> so I can't let anybody go in the basement for now. Okay. Um, a medical examiner is going to be coming here in a little bit. I'm sorry it's a little cluttered down there, but... You're fine. I'm sure y'all have seen a lot worse. Okay. Uh, um, uh, you're probably going to get asked the same questions multiple times, okay. so I'm, so I'm sorry for no, that. it's fine. I just, like I said, I feel like I just mm. missed something. So if you want to... How could he hide that from me? Um, How could he do that? Oh. I work. I work in White Cloud. Mm-hmm. So well, that's a I, I that's a long job. way. I'm, a, I'm law clerk to the circuit court judge up there. Mm. I love my job, but yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. How did this happen? Pardon? Where does he sleep? Down there, right there in that room. So that's the bed. Yeah. yeah. You see the pillow and the blanket and stuff? He sleeps on the top bunk? Yeah, it's a loft. There's no on a bunk. There's okay. Stuff underneath it. Oh, it's like a desk on the underneath? Yeah, well, yeah, the desk got broken, but or boxes is underneath it. <sighs> so you heard him fall. Yeah. That woke you up? Yeah. And you went down there and he was And I helped him up. Um I asked him if he wanted something to eat because he, again, he, he, the first time I noticed anything on even his face was last night. And he said, no, I'm not hungry. I said, did you, did you hit your head? And I checked his head to make sure he didn't have anything. I noticed he has some scratches on his face. I'm like, are you okay? No, I'm fine. And then I watched him get back up on his bed. And then I went back upstairs. And then I woke up and went to check on him this morning when I was getting ready for work. So I went down there and and I said something. I didn't want to see him wake up and I shook him and he didn't respond. Was he on the bed when you came down there? Yes. And then you pulled him down and started CPR? Yes. Okay. I called 911. I, I was, my 20 year old was getting up because I was going to drop him off at work early. Because his e-bike has a flat tire. Oh my gosh. Uh, I should have noticed this. I should have seen this. Oh my gosh. All right. Run. No. We got, we have, um, people coming to talk to you called victim services. Okay. They'll help you through Thank you. the grieving process because please, I, just, I feel I, he's he's really good at hiding stuff. Mm. He's, that's part of the reason his dad couldn't handle him is because he kept lying about stuff. Mm. How old is he? Fifteen. 15? He'll be sixteen in August. Okay. But his dad texted me last May and said I can't handle him anymore. I have to send him to live with you, and I'm like, yeah, sure, absolutely. Why? Why was that? Why was? What did he? What did he do that? He said he was lying to him. He was um, destroying things. Um, is he is he hard to deal with? I don't think so. But I'm stricter than his dad, mm-hmm. so I don't know if that. I mean, he, he he's the lying's been a problem. Um, but nothing well, yeah, major. Nothing crazy. No. Um, he's all teenagers. He's lie. 
trip down the stairs a couple of times, like just half the flight. And then later he came back to me, admitted he did it intentionally. But I've asked him, I'm like, you're trying to hurt yourself? He's like, no, I just wanted to see what would happen. That's the way he, a lot of times he, he wants to see what would happen if he does stuff. And, oh my gosh. And I guess he, he was take, he, he's prescribed ADHD medicine, but he's not taking it. Yeah, because it was, he wasn't able to sleep with it. And he was doing really well. And he asked me if he could not take it. And I said, okay. And it was killing his appetite. That doesn't help. That was, he started, he quit taking it about the time of the first hunger strike because, um, when he finally started eating and he was, he was. But he did eat last night, you said? Yes. He had some toast with butter on it. It's what he had. That's all he wanted to eat. He said his stomach was a little upset. And he didn't want to eat anything else. Oh, oh my gosh. You want to go check on the other kids? Yeah, you can do that for sure. I know my 20 year old's got my seven year old, but still. Nope, that's. Paul? Okay. Oh. Yes. You okay up here? Yeah. I'm, just, I'm sorry, Splutter Joe. I'm really sorry. Oh my god. I knew I should have made him eat, but he just went. Did you notice it was covering up with big building? You didn't notice, never mind. No, I love I you, just... dear, but you just, you never noticed. Do you have a picture of him like, before he started losing weight? Um, yeah. You're doing all right. Yeah, you're, it's almost like you're in a daze. Like you don't know what's real and what's not. Hey, have have you been talking to him at all recently? I talked to him yesterday morning to get him up. That was right, that's right basically when we started. Mm-hmm. Okay, so how long ago was that? Did you, did you know that he was in this hunger strike? I think I, huh? Yeah, I, I mean, did I tell you or not? I don't know if I did or not. No, I don't, I didn't think you did. Because he's, he's skin and bone. I know, and I just, how did he? He's, he's really... Well, he, he he doesn't communicate with him hardly at all. Like they say hi, and they don't. Yeah, he's. Are you guys full brothers or half brothers? They're full. The only half is the one that's in there. Okay. We are full. Yeah. Uh, I might as well get your name while I'm here. You're probably going to be asked this a thousand times, but. Uh, What's your first name, son? Paul. P A U L. What's your middle name? Byron. B Y R O N. And last name? Jason. Jason. And the last name? Nobody's answering the phone here. What's your date of birth? 04 or 10th of April 2002. Do you have your own phone number? Um, I recently got a new phone, so. I want to look at my new number. Hold on, I'll find it for you. Plus one two three one six 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 four six three eight. And when when was the last time you talked to Tim? Uh, yesterday morning when I was getting him up. No, yesterday afternoon before you left for work. Before I picked you up and took you to work because your e bike tire uh, You were you yeah. from then. Uh, I got off of work at one this morning. Has, has he talked to you recently about his problems at all or what's, what he's dealing with? No, he, he never has said any of his words to me. Hmm. Did you guys have normal conversations? Um, I think the last time we did was before all of this happened. After that, they, he just they, they literally, because he works a lot and they mm-hmm. didn't talk. Yeah, I mean. Sometimes brothers will tell each other what they're not willing to tell their parents. He didn't even know anything about it, he said, so. That's a recording noise, just so that you're aware. I know there's some cameras in here, but the sound is kind of messed up. Gotcha. So, 
I'm going to turn that on too, just in case it helps. Hmm. You came down here with uh, Officer Stephen, which is that something? Yes. How did that kind of all transpire? I don't know how it ended up here. I was, from what I've, I know that my mother had come, I think, down here. Okay. Or something. I think it was in the court, or I don't exactly know the full details. Okay. But, um, she left my stepfather's phone with me. I don't have any access to anything. The only thing that I would be able to do is if the person she's with, I think his name is Stephen or Stan, Frank Stanley. Stanley. Yes, thank you. Uh, if he could, he would contact, I would be able to pick that up. But okay, nothing else. Were you supposed to work today or no? So you didn't have work today. No, I've got was off. Okay. Can you go back Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Okay. I think it's a morning shift. Are you working two different jobs? Did you say you were working two No. I used to work two different uh, jobs. I heard you say that. In Oklahoma. Oh, okay. Because so, I think your brother was like, I want to work two jobs. And you're like, mm-mm. No, no you don't. No. <laughs> Four hours of sleep maximum was a nightmare. That's a joke. That's not even funny, actually. Huh. Um... Yeah, four hours doesn't sound like a lot to get yeah, anything done. What kind of jobs are you doing then? Fast food. Okay. And I had one before, and then after I graduated from an alternative school right. early, um, I started a second one that was uh, by my biological father's demands, basically. Okay. Um... Have you talked to him at all recently? Biological father? Does he know um, what's going on? Or? I don't think quite yet. The last time we talked to him was last week. Okay. He, uh, he and my stepmother got a divorce. So they called and let us know about all that. What's, uh, what is your relationship like with him? I mean, do you try to associate with him at all or not? Really? Not really. I found out that a lot of what he's told me about my biological mother up here was nothing more than blatant lies. Okay. He said that she didn't care for me, that yeah. she never wanted to see me, which were both lies. It was just, he's a control freak. Okay. So, and he's very manipulative. Okay. My stepmother's names were never even on any Anything for like paying bills or for school stuff. It was all him. Okay. This so is very much yes. control of everything. Yes. So. And, uh, I know that that night Timothy did eat because we had pizza. He had three slices. Oh, of wait, I want to stop it for just a second. Yes. Sorry. That's okay. Yes. Um, I don't want to talk anything specific about the case just yet. Uh, since you, since the police showed up at your house and yeah. they brought you down here. I want to advise you some rights before we talk about that sort of thing. What yeah. I do want you to know, though, is that we went through the phones, okay? Okay. And we're beginning to go through the phones, and there's a lot of evidence in the phones, and I know that you're kind of aware of communication between yourself and your mother. Yes. And those sort of things. And that's kind of what I want to talk to you about. Yeah. But, um, I mean, certainly those are very serious things that you guys are talking about. Yeah. And, it, I mean, from what I saw, it sounds like you're compassionate in that you yes. cared about him and you sent some pictures that were like, he's looking too skinny and we, we need to feed him. And you know, so sometimes you get frustrated, but at the end of yeah. the day, you kept coming back to like, to caring. Um, yeah. But the end result of that, he passed away, right? And he passed away from not eating food. Yeah. Um, so, but I, I want you to be aware of this stuff, okay? So these are your random rights, right? So you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can will be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to talk on the attorney and the right to his presence before or during any questioning. If you cannot afford to hire an attorney, one will be appointed to a public expense to represent you before any questioning. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, when we talk about, I just jump right into it. Yeah. I know that we talked yesterday. And yeah. I know that not everything that we talked about was the truth yesterday. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. You don't have to feel bad. You don't have to feel guilty about not telling the truth to me. Okay. 
I want you to just focus on yourself right now. Think about what's best for you. Yeah. And, and let, try to get to the truth of what really happened with your brother because he deserves that. Um, I mean, there's clearly a lot of messages about stuff that you guys are doing with him about what he's eating, about restricting his food. How does that, how did that all work? Like, what was he allowed to eat? We stopped the food restrictions recently because we had noticed just then we wanted to get that back on. We didn't want any of this. We never wanted him to be injured or hurt. Okay. I loved him so much. Yeah, I can tell that. I can mm-hmm. certainly tell that. When you say we, you talk about your mother. Yes, she uh, she loved him. We wanted what's best. Yeah. The thing is, he was stuck in the past. Okay. What? Uh, so you stopped the food restriction. When did that kind of happen? Like ballpark that for me. Two weeks, approximately. We we were hoping that we could get enough where it would be safe, and then we could continue to add it back to where we wouldn't have to worry, and we could. What were the What were the restrictions? We made sure that it was still something that gave him enough calories and everything. We it was rice or bread, and like I said last week, he got pizza. Okay. What were the What were they in place for? Like in the first place, sneaking food over and over and over. Okay. We We've tried everything. We were nice. We had different consequences, but he just okay. he never listened. What were some of the other types of consequences? Like. Um, Like prior to, prior to, like, are we talking like? We did take away his devices. Okay. Because that was also because he wouldn't stay on his school sites and would just go and try and play games or watch YouTube. Okay. He was, the thing is, he should have been held back so much. Yeah. But he passed all of his final exams. So, I don't think it was my stepmother. My stepmother was amazing. Yeah. But I believe it was my father's doing it. Okay. Helping with past exams. Was it all online school? No. For back in Oklahoma, he went to public. The thing is, okay. he never really did any of the other work. But when it came to final exams, he had everything he needed to know. So they let him move to the next grade, which was just... Right. So, you guys lived together back in Oklahoma? Yeah. What was life like back there? Hectic. Okay. My, uh, my step, my step nieces, my stepmother's grandchildren live with us. Okay. Because of stuff that was going on between your mother and your father. My stepmother had custody. Yeah. And we had, uh, at that point, we were living in a four bedroom with eight people in the house. Jeez. Yeah. And. Did you share room with him then? Yes, and it absolutely smelled because even then, he, even when he the bathroom was really just a couple feet away, he wouldn't get up and go. Okay, and what is that? You kind of told me about it yesterday, but you said there was some sort of problem that he had to cause that, or yeah, you I mean, don't I don't know. Honestly, no. I just I, that's what I've assumed. Okay, because it's I'm pretty sure it's been basically his whole life that this has been happening. And it's not just that. He's urinated in places back in Oklahoma, in his closet, and dressers. Yeah. Okay. He's, uh, what type of, like, disorders does he have that you're aware of? I know he has ADHD. I believe he has sensory processing. Okay. Um, I was never there for any sort of autism spectrum test, but... From what I've seen, I know that he, that probably was a thing. I also know he was motor and speech impaired. He okay. couldn't run right and talk right. And I think when he was younger, he had to have a surgery on his ears to have tubes put in because he has heightened hearing that was very loud noises could be painful. Oh, okay. So too much. Yeah. The fact is that he could hear my mother, my stepmother talking with a friend about going to a movie with the TV when it was on really high volume. Oh, because okay. one of those sort of pointers. What about you? Do you have any of those sort of things or anything? Uh, I have ADHD. Okay. And I think they said I was diagnosed with sensory processing, but from what my mother has told me, that that's, that's just no. What is that? I, I'm not sure. Uh, What's sensory processing? It's basically when you overreact to things way okay. too much. Yeah. And I guess loud noises and things 
are oh God, and these bright lights are disturbing for me. That's there's not really any of that. The only problems I have is when someone's music has a lot of bass drumming in it. Okay. For me, that'll feel like someone's smashing my ribs with a mallet. Oh, okay. That's why I don't hardly listen to music very high if it's got uh, bass drums because it hurts. Yeah, that would make sense. Um, did you go to school? Yes, I went to the school back in Oklahoma. I graduated from Santa Fe High School. Okay. I just, I've even got the diploma and I stand in my room. Okay. You graduated from high school. What did you kind of do after that? Just, um, I think, I know that my father had kicked me out after, like in, I think May two years ago or so. So like 20, May of 20. Is that 20? Yeah. And due to COVID, the graduation had been postponed to July and I had been managed, I had managed to get my bio mom's number at that point and was capable of talking to her and telling her how all of this had happened. Yeah. And I also asked some of the things that about that, what dad had told me the whole, did he, did you really not care? Right. And from what he told, and I'm pretty sure it's scientifically impossible that she had her tubes undone for, for Gabriel, which, from what I'm guessing, that's an impossibility, isn't it? Oh, okay. So I, he's, he's, a miracle. Miracle. he's a little miracle child. Fair enough. He's a blessing to this world. Yeah. Is your mom doing like that? Certainly. That he's a blessing. Of course. Yeah. She loves him so much. Yeah. She loved every single one of us, but my dad's controlish, freaky nature was just... He didn't want her having any contact and screwing all of his control up. Okay. And there was a thing back in Oklahoma where I had to, I had problems with emotional release. I, I was so terrified of him that I didn't ever want to have released any of the negative emotions I ever had around him. It was, there were times where I wanted to say no, but I was so terrified that I just couldn't. Yeah. Here, I can release my anger. And I do it in the right ways. I never do it any in any way that I'm not supposed to. Okay. And if I unintentionally cop an attitude with my mother, I I realize it and I apologize, telling her that I did not mean to, that I just slipped a small amount and I'm going to go and do something to calm down. Would there be any sort of consequence for your mom if you would have slipped up with her attitude wise or how that work? Um, there were times when I would cop an attitude that was unnecessary and she would have me get off devices for maybe 15 minutes because usually that was what it was revolved around because I, I'll be honest, I have a, I have an addiction to my devices. Okay. I, it's, it's not something I can really do without, I guess. I don't know. I, I never had not very much of that back in Oklahoma. Yeah. My dad was strict. He didn't even give me a phone. My si- my sister and my stepsister had phones before I did. And that was due to the fact that he could not raise a male. And at first he thought not that the ADHD was just ADD. Because like my mother, I could hyperfocus, which is actually a symptom of ADHD. All right. And then... So now you're in work. I know you talked yesterday about how you're paying bills. And yep. And unlike, yeah, yeah. And unlike my step, my father, she doesn't take, force me to give her half of my paycheck. He forced that on me. Yeah. And I was working basically minimum wage so, at both. Yeah. That's tough. It was nightmarish. And the thing is that my stepmother didn't even know about that until after I had moved and I had told her. Okay. And she apologized so heavily because she, she was just going to want some stuff to help with rent at times. Yeah. And when he asked to borrow money, he never paid it back. And my mother has paid it back every time. Whether it's in a way like paying for the bike payments for my electronic bike, because, you know, we put a down payment and then we have to do the consecutive payments for yeah. it. Was that your first, would you consider that like your first big purchase on your own? Your electric bike or have you purchased a more expensive thing? 
more expensive than that? I don't believe so. No. What about PCs? I don't know if you spent a decent amount of money on computers or I was trying to just piece them together or? We spent good amounts because Minecraft is something I, I've always loved. Yeah. And cause for me, for the ADHD, being able to build and be creative is just something that I absolutely adored. Okay. And I also, it also was something that I liked doing for YouTube. I have a YouTube channel myself. It's not popular or anything, but okay. it is very, it's something that I was inspired by from right. the Preston plays in the recently past Technoblade. Yeah. Okay. So you come here with mom about two years ago. Yeah. And Timothy comes about a year ago. You said, I think you said yesterday, the same date even, right? Yeah, the same date that I was, I left the house. I, I, I was, I moved here into Michigan, I think on the 30th. Okay. Because for the time after I had moved out of my parents' house, I stayed with my uncle David now, and uh, okay. who both had actually been tricked by my father to also believe that my mother was bad, until she managed to clear the air. Yeah. So you say the same date, but a year later, does that sound right? Yeah, I moved okay. here at a later date, but I moved. We he was he moved up here on the day I was kicked out, basically kicked oh, out. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. My dad had basically put a timeline, like I had to move out by a certain date and have my own house to be on my own two feet. Which the thing is, he never prepared me for any of this. He just in any of that, he just right. like I said, he was. I love him. But most of the respect I had for him is gone. I just so Timothy comes up here. What's life like immediately when he gets up here? It was good at first. first. The thing is, it this has happened before. Not like moving up from somewhere, but for the whole thing where I think he said back in Oklahoma, I think once or twice he had said something about being suicidal. Okay. And we had put him in, in my mother, my stepmother and father agreed on this that he should have, he could be institutionalized. And when he got back, the first couple of weeks were good. He didn't misbehave, but then after that, it just reverted back to what he was doing before. Okay. The destructiveness and everything. What a, let's explain that. What did it, show? He, it was very dangerous. He would, pull the outlet covers off. He would screw with the light fixtures. It was okay. our house in Edmond was his room. It was He'd pull the studs out of the wall, rip off the painting, the paint, and he, okay. it was, yeah. Were you able to have a conversation with him like you and I are having like a back and forth conversation or he wasn't able to talk like that? Uh, he could talk. But the thing is that it would mostly be hard to understand. Okay. Because of the speech imperation, I think it's called. I don't know what that word uh, is. Speech impediment? Yeah, there we go. Uh, but, uh, he was in therapy for that and the motor. When you, up here? In no, in Oklahoma. Do you know if he made any therapy or anything up here? Um, no. Okay. Do you know if you ever went to the doctor at all? Here? Um, no, honestly, we never, until, I don't know, we, we made it, since we had stopped the last hunger strike and managed to get him back to a safe weight, we were, we were hoping and praying that he wouldn't need any sort of assistance at that point, which he didn't, he was, he was fine, but then this whole ordeal happened and right. I honestly feel like we should have taken him to the doctor sooner, we, sh- we could have done something, but we, he, with all this, that this happened, it's just... Yeah. Well, I mean, how long ago do you think you probably should have taken him to the doctor? Honestly, if I'm going to be honest, I'd say the day after the divorce, final we got the message about the divorce. And the thing is that my mother can't even face my father right now. We, She doesn't want to call him because the one thing that she and I both know is that he's going to hurl every ounce of blame that he can at her. Right. So what? When was the, When was that divorce? Like, I think it was 
exactly a week ago today or tomorrow. That. So we hope that we did not. You saw yes. a, Yeah, we, uh, we, they, I saw, uh, I saw on your phone that you had sent a, a couple pictures to your mom. Yes. Pretty skinny and you said, you know, hey, he's nothing but skin. But yeah, I was, I was very concerned that it just, uh, I, yeah, what, do you think that maybe would have been a good time to take him to the doctor or? Yeah, honestly, that probably would have been one too. I just, I don't know. And then you sent a picture of like his legs that were just basically gone, right? Just yeah. No was, wonder he can't stand or something along the lines. Yeah. Right? But the thing is, before yesterday and I think the day before, he could walk. Yeah. You might need a little support every so often, like he put his hand against the wall or grabbed the rail of the stairs, but after a couple of seconds he'd let go and be fine. Okay. It was never anything major. Yeah. When was like the last time he was really like talking to you, like able to have a conversation or at least try to have a conversation? Um Last time he actually talked was three days ago, but the day before, or the day after that, the day before yesterday, he could talk, a, he talked a small amount in the morning, but then he just sort of was making groans and moans, and it concerned me. I was, as my mother was driving me to work, I, I recommended that maybe we should take him to the hospital. Okay. I'm not sure if that ever happened or not. I, what did I, she, what did she say about that when you, when you made that recommendation? I I don't know. I think after that, I think that was like as I was getting out of the car and shutting the door. Yeah. So we're talking. So today's the seventh. Yesterday, the sixth. What day are we talking about? The last thing was really kind of talking outside of the morning. Group. The fifth. The fifth. He, he talked some in the morning. He was okay. responsive. Yeah, that much I know. What's the thing with the photograph in the bathtub? Of his face, like zoomed in on his face. Uh, he, he, he had been taking a bath. Okay. And I went in there to check on him at one point and he's just kind of laying there. I'm like, bud, you okay? He didn't respond, but he was looking around. So, he, and he was breathing. I know that much. Yeah. So. Okay. So at that time, but he wasn't talking at that time. No, and it, it did, it's, it started to concern me. I te- I'm not sure if I texted Mama about it or not. Well, you sent a picture to her. Yeah, I probably should have said something about the ER at that point, though. Well, I certainly was so stupid. You have to think about it like this, right? She's, she's a grown adult, and if she, she sees that, that's not all on you, right? You, you made, from what I see, you made numerous attempts to say, we need to do something different about this. Yeah. We, need to, we can't keep doing this thing. I know she's a good person. Yeah. Just, and it's not I don't, a I don't think, I don't know if this is both of our faults. If we should have done something sooner. I know we both could have. Yeah. I mean, I think you have to think about this. Right now is not a time about blaming people, but it's a time to try to figure out, you know, when, when could we have changed things? What could we have done differently? How did we get to the point where we were at? Because, you know, clearly where you guys got to, you say you were in the bath. That wasn't a nice, enjoyable bath, though, right? That was a punishment bath, right? That's a cold, ice cold bath. And, and that doesn't, that's hard to understand. I did wash that. And he did, he, I did tell him that if he wanted to wash up, and he did, but then in the middle of it, I think he, he the whole laying there in a daze happened. When he's getting these ice baths, I know there's numerous of them, right? I mean, because I've read through the messages. Yes. How, how are you getting the ice? Like, where's it coming from? Well, we have an ice machine upstairs. It's not a lot. It okay. can barely create any. It's enough to make it a full-on But okay. But it's a cold bath. Yeah. And you're putting ice in there? Like, one, one dump of ice? Two dump one dump. dump. Yeah, it's yeah. maybe... That much. And, in that you're trying cold water or what type of water? Uh, it, the water doesn't exactly go cold, cold. Okay. It says there's a cold button, but it's basically sort of lukewarm-ish. How many times would you ask me that you guys get cold baths as a punishment for, um, not behaving or whatever, whatever, for, for whatever reason? I think for punishments, it was, I don't exactly know the number, but it wasn't a lot. Are we talking like five, ten, twenty, every day, every other day? Like any idea? Five. Yeah. But 
Whose idea was it to give him a cold bath as a punishment? It was my mother's. Yeah. I I wasn't sure if it would do if it would be a punishment effective or not. I don't. Do you remember the first time you guys did it? Like why? Like what no, did you do? Not exactly. What did you do on that day that you sent the photo that made you have to give him a cold bath? Um. I think it was that he not only peed but also pooped in bed, and my mother wasn't too happy because it absolutely reeked. Yeah. I mean, we talk about bed. I understand we've been to the house and we've been through all the messages. Yeah. Did, where did you sleep most of the nights in that closet? Yes. When did that kind of start happening? Um, or had he always been staying there? No, he hadn't always. Okay. But the thing was, the loft bed, if you've noticed, yeah. the screws and stuff, that was his doing. Okay. And we couldn't get it safely back. So, he should sleep in the closet? Yes. We made sure that it was cleaned. He had a mattress in there, but then he decided to rip off the uh, cover, like a sort of plastic cover we'd put on there to keep it from getting smelly and yeah. disgusting. We wanted, we always wanted what's best for him. We, it's, I don't know. So you guys decided to move him into the closet. There's an alarm on the door. Is that, so what's that for? When you would try and sneak, because if you notice, there was also one on the garage door. That was also because, yeah, there's some food in there that he would try and sneak. Right. And it wasn't just that he was hungry <laughs> at some points for those. It was that. It, he wanted something sweet. He just, and yeah, at times he would be taking stuff that was gonna have plans for food, actual food. Yeah, I agree. I see exactly what you're saying. And it, I don't know about the whole, I don't know, just bread at some points, but we did start giving him actual better food. When, when you talk about the bedroom being moved into that closet, is that your idea or is that your mom's idea? That was my mother's. Yes. And, uh, so how long do you think he was staying in that closet? Um, a couple of weeks maybe. Okay. I think it's, I think we truly had started activating the alarm on the door every night after he, we had found that he would sneak out and get back up on. Yeah. Which was lost bed. Where, like I said, that thing was dangerous at that point because he had been screwing around with the bolts and screws and at any point it could have given way and he could have gotten seriously injured. Right, yeah. So if he moves into there, there's the tarp in there, if that's just to prevent, what is that for? That was after we, I think we had gone to like three plastic covers that he had shredded Yeah. before we decided to put down the tarp. And honestly, I had expected him to complain, but he didn't, and I don't know, I just... So there's this restriction on food, he talked about bread. For how long was he just eating just bread? A week or two. What was he kind of eating before that? Um, we do ramen, sandwiches... And I think at some points we actually give him like a meal. Yeah. What, uh, why was it that he couldn't have meals? I mean, the whole squeaking. I just, I just, I don't know. Does he have squeaking food? A lot, yeah, we. Over and over and over. Who's there would literally be times where I would be sitting on the couch playing. Yeah. And then I'd look up and he's there grabbing something. Yeah. And so whose idea was it for him to just eat bread? Is that your idea? No. Whose idea was that? My mother's. Tell me about the hot sauce. I know that that was used as both the punishment and it was put on the bread. Was it always on the bread? Not always, no. But the thing is, it still hardly did anything for him. Yeah. There would be times where it would do something for me because I'd accidentally rub my eye after I put it on there. It was, ow. Yeah. So you're putting, 
are you, uh, what, what dictates whether or not there's hot sauce on the TV? What, what decides that? I, I don't know. I just, whenever my mother told me to put hot sauce on it, I did. Okay. It was normally a thin layer to make sure that it wouldn't be too much because from what I know, goat, the ghost or the California Reaper is what, 2,000 scoville or 2 million scoville? What does that mean? It's the hot sauce or the hot, the heat index basically. Oh, okay. And that's pretty high? Very. So, so how long have you guys been using the hot sauce for? Um, Almost a month, maybe. Okay. And was that only on bread, or was that on other stuff, too? Uh, I think one time we put it in some rice. Okay. But after that, I don't think we did that again. What was it What was it used for, right? Because you're giving them bread as a meal. What's the purpose of the hot sauce? I know it was punishment, but honestly, I don't think it was that useful because, like I said, he had no feeling in his tongue. He he totally bit a hole in it at one point and didn't even feel it. Was he eating the spread of the hot sauce or was he... Yeah. He was. was that really the only things he had to eat those days or would he get other things to eat? Um, from the bread and rice, other than that, not that I know of. Okay. So for how long do you think he just ate rice and bread and hot sauce? Maybe the four months, maybe. Or the one month, sorry. Oh, I was months. thinking four weeks and I'm going to scream that. Right. We totally understand. I understand what you're saying. So yeah. maybe about four weeks. Yeah. But Did you see a decline in him during that four weeks of losing even more weight or being even less responsive or did, what, what changed when you moved into doing that? Um, I think it was that there would be times where it would take him a moment to respond. At first, I thought it was just him acting, but then I was getting concerned, I think, a week or so, maybe, ago. Okay. That his responses are delayed? Is that what you're yeah. And as a matter of fact, I think you mentioned that to your mom multiple times, right? That that he doesn't seem to be responding, that he yeah. can't walk very well, that he's stumbling. I think you mentioned those things too. Yeah. Right? yeah. What is he what was her response to those things? Um I think she was thinking because there was one point where he did that, but it was before he was thin. Yeah. And it scared the crap out of me, but then he admitted to my mother later that day while I was at work that it was an act. Okay. So I guess we made the mistake, she made the mistake of believing that that was what it was. I don't, I know that he's done stuff like that back in Oklahoma too. He would, he would do something that would scare the crap out of us to make us believe that something was wrong. And several times here, he faked seizures. I've seen it because And I've also seen what happens because back from Oklahoma, he had seizures from medication problems. Okay. But, but yeah, I know that I can tell the difference. And at one point, he nearly, Gabriel had just barely walked back into the parents, into mom and Adam's room, mom and Adam's room, when he tried it again. Had Gabriel been there, he would have been even more terrified than he already was because like we said, he was there for the stroke and the seizure, so. Yeah. The, uh, the hot sauce. Mm-hmm. Whose idea was it to get hot sauce as punishment? Uh-huh. Was that your idea? I don't, I honestly don't remember that part. I don't remember whose it was. I know that before we were using the California, we were using ghost pepper. Sauce. So, where where did these sauces come from? Um, I think it was it was either Amazon or Walmart apps. Okay. Did you ever go to the store and buy anything? No, we didn't ever. Did you ever order any of those yourself, or who was ordering the hot sauce? My mother is, but she would ask if I could help her pay for it, which okay. 
like I said, she's been amazing. She's never demanded money. Yeah. So, I don't get a message that where she asked you. So I knew that right. she wasn't just going, if, right. if I said it not that moment, she would have understood, unlike my father. Yeah. So the, so the hot sauce on bread, if you ever put hot sauce on bread, was it ever your own decision to put hot sauce on bread? No. Sometimes you were left in charge of the two kids, right? Yes. How often yeah. was that that you were in charge? Um, sometimes it was during the mornings where she would go to work, but around three-ish, I would have to go to work myself. She would be home after around six o'clock from work, and at that point, she would ask me to have them both go to Gabriel and Timothy to go to their rooms, which, yeah, yeah for him at that point was... The closet and Gabriel's was downstairs as well. Gabriel would take his tablet because if there's one thing we both know, it's that he's also very dependent on that. It's something that keeps him calm and collected. So mom is, when mom's not there, is she monitoring with the cameras? Is that what the cameras in the home are for? Yes. And how does she communicate with you? Uh, text. Text, text. From her phone to your phone? Or? Yes. Okay. And how does she communicate with the other kids? Uh, through the alarms, because they do have that two, that dual way, uh, talking, but. So she can talk to them through yeah, the cameras. Yeah, cameras. Yes. Through the alarms. Yeah. It's, cameras, not alarms. She okay. says, the alarms don't have. <laughs> sorry. You don't have to be sorry. I'm sorry. So, I just, I can't. So you're, she's able to communicate with them that way. She's communicating with you via text. Yes. Timothy doesn't have anything to text with. He does, but I don't think, because he's, we can't, we couldn't trust him on devices, so we couldn't exactly. So you have, uh, her kind of monitoring everything. I do sometimes at some points, yes. I, I will log into the cameras and make sure that I don't have Gabriel's app because normally before I leave, he's upstairs in her room. He's been like what, that for what a while. Timothy's or Gabriel's? I I don't know about that one honestly. Do you know what app was? Uh, what app was Timothy's? Uh, the one for his room. I think Mama had that one. I know the one in the bathroom was blue something, B-L-U, and then something else. Okay. And you know the one in the downstairs area was Tekken. Okay. So wait, there was, was Timmy had his own two in his room? Yes, but that was before we moved him into the closet. That, the Tekken was for when he was there, and it was also when you would get up and have to go to the bathroom before this whole... Which ones do you know how to log into? Uh... I don't think I remember the one for the Tekken, but I think the other one was my sister Millie's name, and then it was two numbers, I think. I don't remember. Okay. When do you think was the last time you got lost into that camera? Um, the Tekken, it was... Not in the blue. Was it blue? Um, I think it was maybe a couple of days ago. I don't... So, just to be like... But after, but I, normally I would, uh, after I would... When I would get ready to head to work, I would log out of it because I could not stand. With my Apple Watch, it was connected to my phone. So whenever that kind of notification would go, of like Gabriel going to the bathroom, my watch would b- vibrate during work. It would be annoying. Yeah, so. Certainly. Okay. So I wouldn't know what was normally going on during the night. Right. So I know that when we talked yesterday in front of your mom, you know, she was lying about some stuff, right? I know that she's a good person. I'm not doubting that at all. Yeah, we, we never scared. wanted any of this. But you, you also are, you also know just like I know that some of the things that she was talking was about weren't the truth, right? About, she said she didn't know there was a camera in the bathroom. But the fact of the matter, she asked you to put the camera in the bathroom, right? Didn't she send you a text message that says, put the, make sure that the camera's in there and, and, and Take the shower curtain down so I can see him. Didn't she ask you that the day that, the day before he passed away? Yeah. So 
we talked about some of that stuff. Remember how during the conference I said, I know this pepper's for, it's for punishment. And what did she say? She said, oh, I didn't know anything about that. Right? Why do you think she's saying those things? Why do you think she's she doesn't saying? want to appear like a bad person. She doesn't want to be the bad guy in this. We never wanted any of this. We want, we, we want him to be healthy. I know that for a fact. We just, we should have been so much. We should, I, I should have at least put my foot down on something. Right. But you, it's know. not that I'm afraid of her. I, I can't fear her because she doesn't, she's okay. not the type to instill fear. Yeah. I don't know if that's also what caused him to sometimes lie about things as well. Was that he still had this fear of dad and then he thought she would be the same. Yeah. That could very well be the case. She's not, she's nothing like him. That much I know. She's right. But, but she knows that you shouldn't be using hot sauce as a punishment, right? She knows better than that. And you know better than that too, right? Yeah. yeah I think that anybody with some common sense knows that hot sauce is not something used to punish a child for, for eating food that they're not supposed to eat or for disrespect or for not following orders. We know those things aren't okay. I know that. We've, we've tried so many different things. We just were running out of options of, Trying to find a punishment that would actually work. And even that did nothing. Right. And we still kept trying now. I don't know why. So you have the hot sauce. Tell me about the handcuffs. I know that once again, she took no blame for that, right? And who did she put it all on? She put it all on you. She said that that was your idea and that those were yours and that you did those things. But I think that's not the truth from what I read on here. What's the real truth on that? We would have him against the wall at some point, and he would try to move. And at one point, we'd actually put motion sensors on him to stop that. But on him himself. Yeah, like, they were vibrator. They would okay. sense any sort of vibrations. Yeah. But the thing is, he'd learned to trick them by moving so slow. Or they'd be on his door, and they'd be moving so slow yeah. that it wouldn't set off. So you'd get away with stuff. Okay. So... So you're saying standing still, was that like a punishment that he was forced to stand On the still? wall, yeah. Against the wall, he was having, was that regular that he had to do that? Like how, how often was he having to stand against the wall? Um, since two weeks ago, it wasn't very often. Okay. Just because he couldn't physically stand against the wall anymore? No, it was, uh, I guess that, it just didn't work because if he wouldn't set it off when he was against the wall, he would then, like, it, it'd be on his, um, it'd be on the belt around him. He'd stuff it in his pocket and then just sit down on the ground or lay down and stay like that. So, so he was punished by trying to make it stand, but then he would lay down. Did you guys ever wake him up on purpose because he wasn't supposed to be sleeping? Yeah, and we also know one thing about him was that if he slept during the day, he was going to be up all night. Okay. So you wouldn't let him sleep during the day, essentially? If you wanted maybe an hour long or two hour nap, we would, but anything longer, we knew that it would start screwing with his actual sleeping. So who's monitoring this all the time? Like, who's making sure he's not sleeping during the day? Who's making sure he stands against the wall? Um... When my mother was at work, she'd have me log in before she'd leave. I'd come upstairs and go back to sleep on the couch. I'd set an alarm normally for 10.30 to 11.30 so that I could wake up and be up to keep things going around the house, keep everything in order. Okay. So she never did any of this to be harsh. I mean, listen, I'm, I'm in no way questioning whether you're not cared or any of those things. I'm not. But the reality is we, we just have to talk about how we got to this point now and how these decisions were made. So I, I think I don't want you to think that. We I, also did stop the leg cuffs, yeah. I think, a while ago because we noticed that his ankles were swelling. So we stopped that because we didn't want his legs to become yeah. irreparable. How, how, how often were you guys putting leg cuffs on before that? Um... Was that something like at night to stop him from moving around, or what was it for? Uh, I think we did it once 
or so. Once, maybe twice at night. One, like, uh, one time. I don't know. I'm, I'm so, so lost. I just don't know what to do. What about handcuffs or zip ties? What did you guys use those for? The zip ties were either to fasten the vibrational arms to his belt during the day. Yeah. Or to put it on his wrist, not too tight work. And I would make sure after the first time we did it, I would make sure to cut off the end of the zip ties because I had them loose. And then he decided to tighten them to where they were nearly cutting off circulation. Yeah. So after that point, I myself, when I was told to put him in the zip ties, I'd grab a pair of scissors and snip off the ends to make sure that he couldn't tighten it to where it was cutting anything off. Were you guys ever zip tying his hands together? Uh, his hands, I, I think we did once when we had a, like a pair of them that could, the zip cuffs. Oh, okay. But again, I cut those off to make sure that he, don't get he wouldn't tighten yeah. them, yeah. Because what was that for? Why would you use those to buy? Normally we have him do this. It was something that my, I'm not sure if it was my father or my mother back when they were together. But when we were put in timeout, we'd be told to do this. And so sometimes, though, he'd try and do stuff like this and, or just try and put his hands down or down by his side. So we do that to keep them up. Yeah. How long do you think that goes on for? Um... I think the zip ties cuffs probably when we had first used them, it was when I would leave, when I would get ready to leave for work, I'd put them on, do the whole snipping, and then when mama would get home, she'd grab the scissors and cut them off immediately. Yeah. How long are we talking? Is this for a couple hours, eight hours, ten hours? Uh, normally the maximum was three. Okay. Because when I worked in the Normally at that point, I think I was only working evening and closing shifts. Yeah. It would be 4.30 or 4 o'clock that I'd need to be there. So in order to get there, I would have to leave an hour before to actually make it on time. Right. But, uh, and we, we'd act, we'd put the vibrational arms on there, but that again, we stopped that after yeah. the zip ties because with the chains or the chain parts of the cuffs, I think they would rattle to where if you tried to move, it would still set them off even with the whole slowness. Yeah. Tell me about the night before. I know that you said you got on the night too. Yeah. Let's talk about you know, kind of what really happened that night because I know that. I did take my meds. He was in his room. I didn't think to check. I should have though. I should have seen. Made sure he was at least okay, that he was, that he was breathing. I don't, he could have, he could have been gone by the time I'd already gotten home. Right. So when you first talked to us and, and you talked to the police, you know, you said he was on his bunk bed, right? Yeah. But that's not the truth. No. Okay. He was in that closet that's right there by the bunk bed? Yeah. Okay. And then your mom had texted you that early in the night or how did you know that he was in there? I guess at that point it was just something I would already know because I have a slight problem. It's not like a problem problem, just a small sort of OCD with the light switches. Okay. So I go upstairs and I take my meds and normally the light switches by the back door, I want them down. And then when I come over to the stairs, normally when I flip it down, the light in the dining room would turn on. So I'd go to the stairs and flip it to turn the light on for the stairs and the ones in the dining room down off. Go downstairs and then flip that switch to get the stairs off and then the one in there would turn on. And that was how I would know he wasn't in the bed. And then go and turn the ones off at the start of the hall and then turn off the light with the switch by my bedroom. So you know he's not in the bed? Yes. So you, you, you told us that you heard snoring. That, was that a lie? Yeah. And did, did you come up with that on your own or did somebody ask you to say that he was in the bed? Uh, 
It's okay. Yeah, I know. It's okay. I feel so guilty. Like, I could have done something at any point in this. But you're not. You're his brother. You can have a mother that can tell me what to do. And so, I understand why you feel the way that you do. But at the same time, you have to look at it. You, you, you think that your mother's telling you to do what's best for him, right? That's what you've been telling me. Yeah. And I know she, she wants what's best for all of us. So, I'm back to my question. Did somebody ask you to say his name's on the bed? I came up with that on my own because I didn't want to. You came up with that on your own? Yeah, because... So tell me what really happened in the morning then, because obviously what was told to us wasn't the truth. What really what really happened when you guys, somebody found him or... I woke up and I had been grabbing my shoes and it was, it was at that point that it basically all played out like we said. The whole morning thing was exact. He was, he wasn't breathing in the closet. It was the closet though. We had to get him out of the closet to try and resuscitate. So it's you and your mother that tried to get him out of the closet? We did get him out. Okay. And we tried to resuscitate. Yes, was it, was it, did, who noticed him first? You or My you? mother. Okay. Did she have asked you via text to check on him on the way up? That's not what happened. She said, hey, can you check on him on your way upstairs? You remember that text message at all? No. Okay. I, there might have been one that I didn't see, but okay. So you guys pull him out of the car. And we tried to resuscitate what? We gave him rescue breaths. His breath smelled horrible. I thought maybe he might have still been capable of re- being resuscitated because his mouth was still wet. Yeah. And so I thought maybe it had just been recent so we could, we could do something, but. When you were at work, right, you came home at about two, does that sound right or is that? Yeah, we, that was true because, okay. what was it? It was the day after the 4th of July or so? I don't, what's today's date? Yeah, today's the 7th. This was the 7th. Yeah, it was on the 5th, so. Well, it's the 5th when you were at work and you yes. came home in the morning though. Yes, and, yeah, some of the servers had, there were still people in the lobby and we had to finish that off. I'm the general utility, so I have to break down the machine, clean the outside, clean the floors. Gotcha. So when you guys pull him out of the closet, like, does he have clothes on at that point, or is he in a diaper, or what's that stain? He had a shirt. I think we had put him in pants, or sweatpants, but I don't know, maybe some point in the night he took them off. I don't know about when that. When you say we, you weren't there going we into that, right? No. So how would you know if, he, if we put him in sweatpants? Do you see what I'm saying? My, yeah. So do you know if he had pants on or not? No, sweater? honestly. But he didn't have them when we got him out. He had the diaper on, at least. So he has the diaper on. You're saying that he has a shirt on? What shirt did he have on? It's the very same sweatshirt that we found him in. Because obviously we didn't want him to get cold. Or I don't think Mama wanted him to get cold. I'm pretty sure she texted me about that. I'm not sure. Okay. So you guys pull him out. Does he have pants on or no pants on? No, no. And when we get there, he has pants on. Yeah, she had me put them on. She asked you to put pants on. He was not for. I, I don't know. I just. And so you guys, at that time, she decides that she's gonna lie to him and say that he was in the bunk bed. I don't understand. I don't know. She clearly, she doesn't just... want to seem like she's bad. That she, we never, we weren't neglecting him. And even if that's what it, if it somehow ended up like that, it was never intentional. Right. Well, what you're saying, I mean, if, you, if we talk, right, there's, there's all these things where you're like, she didn't want to seem like this, she didn't want to seem like this, she didn't want to seem like this. Did you know that it all seems like that, right? Yes, I know. It does. And, and he clearly was neglected because he died from it, right? The reality is that he was. That's why we're here talking today. So, he was very much neglected. And the fact that, you know, she had asked you to put hot sauce on his private parts. You she had that? She asked, but I never did. I never you did. never did that? No. Okay. And she had asked you to put hot sauce directly into his mouth. Did you do that? 
Yes. Is that is that on the fifth, the day kind of leading up to all this stuff? Yeah. How much hot sauce did you put in there? Um, um And who, whose idea was that to put that hot sauce in there? Hers. And what was the purpose of that? Again, she thought the whole unresponsive was an act. She thought it was an act. Which yeah. clearly, very clearly it wasn't. I mean, yeah. Where, is the hot sauce that he used, is that the one that was in the bathroom, or is there a different one? That was the one in the bathroom, yeah. Okay. How do you feel about lying during this? Is that, how does that make you feel? I, I just hate it. I just, I know she doesn't want to be the bad guy. She never wanted this. We, right. we loved him so much. And it just, I don't think it's about, I don't think it's about love at this point. I think it's about, not knowing what to do, not knowing how to handle the situation. We didn't. From we didn't know how to do any. We didn't. I don't think you know. I've never. The worst punishment I've ever gotten in Oklahoma, it was my father. He, he spanked me with a belt so hard that my belt was bruised. Yeah. And at another point, they had me do wall sits. He had me do wall sits while holding two cans of chicken noodle soup out like this. And that was when I was in high school. I could hardly get to school the next couple of days because I had to walk and my limbs were so stiff and filled with lactic acid that it was just painful to try and even get across the street. And again, bruises on my backside to where it was really hard to sit at school. What other kinds of things did you guys ever put hot sauce in your mouth? Did you ever put hot sauce like in his eyes or anything like that? Not that I know of. I think at one point he may have, after he'd eaten, he had forgotten to wash his hands and rubbed his eye. Okay. And at one point, I knew potentially that he did. Did you ever directly put hot sauce into his eye? No, I remember. But when that happened, I helped him wash out his eyes to make sure that it wouldn't sting so much. Or it wouldn't sting at all. I'm not sure if it helped or not. But he was, he said he was good after. I think that was a couple of weeks back. Okay. Yeah. What else can you tell me about what happened there at all? Um, what other types of punishments did you guys have for him? I know at one point that he was actually refusing to eat. We would give him his food and he would just be stubborn and sit there and just slowly, slowly. It was regular bread, nothing else on it. Just chow down to the point where it was basically he was trying to waste time he could be upstairs. Where did he spend most of his time? In his room. We, we wouldn't make him stand. Sometimes we would have him kneeling, like on his knees, like this, facing one of the corners, but... What was that for? For punishment? Yeah, I don't even know that it was for at this point. I'm not sure. But where did he spend most of his time? It was in that room. The I think closet, the closet there? Yeah, I think less than three or so weeks ago we were, we've been having him try and do schoolwork, but, but the thing is that he's just, at this point, I'm slightly curious on how he's even in, he was even in sophomore year. He was supposed to be a junior next year, but I don't, we weren't sure if we were going to be able to do that because he was just, he was flunking everything. And my mother graded fairly. She used the actual answers that were on the website or in textbook of some sort. Yeah. Right. Back in Oklahoma, he was also even destructive at school, destroying textbooks, desks, really anything. I don't. So he was a destructive child. I just saw that. Right? Where? Yeah. 
you, do you not agree to tell us the same story that he was in the bunker, or how did that happen? You couldn't have both just possibly made up the same story. No. So what happened? She told you, right? She told you what to say. Took it. She told you what to say. Yes. Because why? Did she tell you why? Because it looked bad for you guys? It's not just that. We loved him. She... Did you... Can I ask you this? Like, straight up? Mm-hmm. You keep saying love, love. Do you feel like this was love? That he's dead now because he couldn't eat food? Does that feel like love to you? No. He's dead because he couldn't eat. No. And, and I don't know anybody that thinks that's love. What I think's happening is your mom's convinced you that she's this perfect person. And she's asking you to do all these things that are literally killing your brother. I know she's not perfect. How is that love? How is love? How is love love ice baths? How is love? How is love handcuffing and how is love restricting movement? And how is love hot sauce in the mouth and only eating bread? Like what if you're, what if you only got to eat bread? How would you feel? What if you only got to eat bread with hot sauce? Would you eat? No. You're pretty skinny already. It wouldn't take you this, long. This is, this is my natural weight. I have an overactive metabolism. But it wouldn't take you long to be very much skin and bones if all you got to eat was bread and hot sauce. Because how could you eat it? And how could you feel good about eating it? Was he throwing up stuff that he was eating? Forcefully, he would force himself to, to get it back up. Yeah. When? Like recently, in the last couple weeks? Yeah. He would force himself, honestly. You ever think it's because maybe it was painful? It's hot sauce. It's not like that just goes away. Did you ever complain about pain? Stomach pain? Pain from using the bathroom? Not that I know of, no. I do know that my mother, she's not perfect, but she's not a bad person. We were, we, do you know, can I ask you this? Do you know of any good people who starved a child to death? Tell me of one that you know. Tell me of one that you know. That's a child who has a lot of problems, right? That's not a child that's taking care of themselves. They can't take care of themselves because you guys are restricting where he can go and what he can do. And if he does something wrong, you're punishing him. By giving him ice baths and hot sauce and only feeding him bread. How is that? How is that a loving person? How is that a loving mother? You know what that sounds like to me? And honestly, the worst mother I've ever met in my entire life is what it sounds like to me. I know. I know. But she is not. Maybe she wasn't to you. Maybe she was a good mother to you. And maybe she wasn't to Gabriel. It sounds like she's a very good mother to Gabriel. But to one of the three child, one of the three children, she didn't care. She you can say, say it. you can say it if you want. She she starved him to death because he wouldn't stop taking food. Well, maybe he's taking food because he wants to live. Have you ever thought about that? Yes. Maybe he's stealing food so that he can survive. He's dead because he didn't get food. Who knows that? Well, that's not anybody's fault but your mother's, and you can try to take the, some of the blame if you want. But it's her fault because every single time I see a message in here, it's her telling you what to do. And she puts you right in the middle of this. She puts you right in the middle of this where it looks like some of the stuff's your idea. And, and it actually looks like in some of these things that you kind of enjoy it. That you kind of enjoy punishing him for doing wrong things. Do you feel like you kind of enjoy punishing him for that stuff? No. Maybe not that he was in pain, but that you were, you were in charge and you got to tell him, you can't do that. Go do this. This is your punishment. Did you like some of that stuff? No. Did she like some of that stuff? No. How come you guys are laughing and joking about it sometimes with smiley faces and like, if why? it's the upside down smiley face? Yeah, what's that mean? It's the opposite of happiness. Okay. It means that I'm really angry okay. and she's kept me calm, like I said. Cause he made you mad a lot, right? It's not that he made you mad a lot. But when you look back on it, do you think he really could control it? Clearly he had some, he needed help. He didn't need punishment. He needed some help. He couldn't make those decisions or do those things on his own. We, you saw it over and over and over and over again, right? What was your mother's choice? 
her choice was more punishment, less food. More punishment. The only food you get is bread. And the only bread you get sometimes is with the hottest hot sauce that we can find. That's all you get to eat. There's no way that you can look at yourself and think that's okay. And that your mom's good for that. She was doing what's best for him. How could that be best for him? Why couldn't it be, why couldn't it be a, a piece of chicken that's, that's cooked? Why couldn't he eat that? Why does it have to be bread with hot sauce? It's not about punishment. You need food to survive. You need food to live. He didn't get to live because of that. Because of what you guys did. And, and I'm sitting here talking to you because I think that way more of it has to do with your mom than you. I don't think that you're this bad person that was out here doing these things. But you're also still not telling me the whole truth about what happened that night. About the night that he ended up dead. That there's more to that story. I have told you everything that I have. I just... I don't want to live a life where I regret the fact that I hid somehow, something. And I've told you everything I know. How do you feel about living a life where you hid that your brother wasn't eating? from society that you hid, that your brother was dying. How do you feel about that? I hate myself, okay? If I could take his place right now, if I could give him back his life, I'd dip it in the tap on heartbeat. Did your mom really do anything like this to you? No. Not even back when he, she and my father were together. The punishments were him. When did this stuff kind of start? Sounds like to me it started after your stepdad was out of the house. Because too much he took would take advantage of that situation. We were all stressed. And he would take advantage of that. He anything he can find to take advantage of almost his entire life, except for I think when he was still a baby. He would find some way to take advantage of whatever he can. Was there ever food restrictions when is it Eric? Or Dad? Yeah, Eric, uh, not Eric, um, uh, Adam? Adam? Adam's stepdad to you, correct? Yes. Was there ever food restriction with bread only when he was in the house? No, because... Was the house messy like it is now? Disgusting. It wasn't as messy. We... With all the stress that's been going on, we just... We've had moments where, yeah, we could get it cleaned up, but... Does your mom feel bad at all about... Giving him just bread and yes. a lot of sauce and locking him in the closet. And yes, she hates it. it. And she hates it. She never once enjoyed it. Ice baths. Ice baths. She gave him ice bath on the day that he died, right? Getting up to it. And she wanted him to sleep in the tub. That's what I read. Did that happen? Did he sleep in the tub? No. He didn't. No. He didn't die in that bathtub and you guys dragged him into that closet and waited for the morning to call the police? That's no. not what happened. No. It's not. Do you think she did that? Do you think that message is just a little bit suspicious? That she sends you at just about midnight that says, he's he's in the closet, I had to drag him in there. You don't think he was already dying or dead at that point? I was working, I didn't read that message until basically I'd gotten home. But do you think she sent that for a reason? Why would she send that? I don't know. Doesn't it seem like maybe he was already dead? That she put him in there so that he could wake up and have died in his sleep. But she can't call the police when he's in an ice bath and he freezes and he dies. Not freezes per se, but he dies in the bath. And she drags him in there. Did she talk to you about about that? Did she tell you the truth about what really happened? I don't know at this point. She did, right? I don't know. I don't want you to lie to me. No, I don't know if he died in there. I don't know where. I I I remember. I know that when it when I got up, he was gone. And when was the last time you saw him alive? The fifth. What time? He ballpark. Um, I think because of my bike, Mama had to come pick me up and drop me off at work, so I was very late getting there. But I'd let them know. Beforehand. I know he was alive before I left. 
You know, it was a lot of left for work. Yeah. And you don't really know exactly what that was. I think she managed to get there a little bit after six. I managed to get her, get to work around six thirty-five ish. So she says to you at eleven forty-nine p.m. on seven five. She says, "Please set your alarm for six a.m." I ended up dragging him back to a small room that's talking about the closet. Yeah. Because I wasn't going to risk him having access to the tub or other things overnight. Wasn't he already in the tub? So what do you mean risk him having access to the tub overnight? He's still Play trying to be. Water. She says he's still trying to be stupid. But I will tell you more tomorrow while I take you to work, describing how many different ways I've proved that he's still faking. He's yes. still doing it. The thing was, was that yesterday, ridiculous. I had offered him a pizza roll. Because I was, I wanted to truly test whether he was faking or not. And at first he didn't, he didn't move. I'm like, okay, maybe this is, but then he moved and went to try and grab it. I'm like, okay, I don't, I don't even know. I don't know anymore. Well, he wasn't faking it, right? Cause he died. Yeah. He I wasn't know. faking it. Unless he, unless your mom did something to him to kill him. Do you think she did no, that? of course not. Outside She's of not feeding her food and punishing him for months. That's what killed him, right? Or did she, did she hold a, a pillow over his mouth and stuff? No, of course not. She's not a, she wouldn't Did she hold him by the throat and squeeze it until he died? No. So what killed him was not having food, not having access to food and malnutrition for months? How long did this go on for? I don't know. I don't know. You feel, you feel good at all about any of this stuff? No, of course not. You can't, can't, right? I can't, I can't even live with myself. But you, how do you feel about over and over and over again defending your mother about how good she is. Do you feel like that's the truth anymore? Because I'm quite disgusted by her. I'm disgusted by her. She never wanted this. Then she, what, she, how, how smart is your mom? She's incredibly intelligent. Yeah. Very cool loudy. Right. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought, how can a woman that's this smart, this intelligent, graduate from law school, how could she not know what's happening? How could she think this is fake? How does she not know she's starving? How does she not see that he's wasting away? And you here, you're telling me that you've got some some mental health issues, but you graduated from high school, and it's very obvious to you that he's mal- he's got malnutrition, right? It's very obvious to you. But your mom here's not seeing that, and she's a she's a law school graduate, and she's very smart. Do you see what I'm looking at here? She's a liar. She's lied to you about so much stuff. At some point, you need to stand up for yourself and realize she's a manipulator, she's a liar, she put you in this spot, she did this to your brother, using you. Do you not see that? That she used you to do this to your brother. Your mother used you. She's so smart. She's smarter than any of us here. She's smarter than me. She's smarter than any detective here. She's smarter than our chief of police here. She's smarter than all of us. And, and we're supposed to believe she didn't know what was happening. No, she didn't want him around anymore because he was too much of a problem. You know that's the truth. You can look back at it and see that, can't you? She didn't want him around anymore because he was too much work. That's the truth. And the second you start to believe that and understand that, then I think that's the time you can move forward in this case. Until you believe that, until you understand that, you're never moving forward from this. This isn't an accident. This didn't just happen. Your mom knew exactly what was happening to him, that he was wasting away. You saw it, didn't you? You saw it happening right in front of you. It was never intentional. From your, from, for you? Or for her? Is she smart or is she not smart? She's highly intelligent. Then how is this not intentional? She thought, what, what did she think was going to happen then? He was just going to be good? And all of a sudden he was going to start behaving and doing everything she said because she didn't feed him food? I don't know. What did she think was going to happen? I don't know. I don't know what exactly what happens, what she thought was going to happen. At some point he wasn't going to wake up. She never wanted him dead. She loved him. That's love to you? Everything that we talked about is love? I... <laughs> How? Who do you love in your life? 
My family. Have you ever thought about starving them? No, of course. Have you ever thought about not giving them food as a punishment? No, of course. Have you ever thought about giving them hot sauce so that they would listen? No. Or they would do what was told? You somehow don't think those things are okay. Do you think those things are okay? No. Because everybody knows they're not. Except the smartest woman in the room. She's the one person that doesn't know that's not okay? You're joking, right? No. The smartest woman in the room is the one that doesn't know you can't do those things. No, it's all very intentional. The smartest woman in the room knows. She graduated second year class from law school. She graduated with honors from college and from law school. But she doesn't know that not giving your kid food is going to make him sick and die. We gave him food. She even told me to make sure that he had a good amount of what she would tell me on certain, on random days. They were never consecutive, I don't believe. What for the hot sauce punishment, but other than that, it was always bread and rice. At one point, she even asked me to put some broth. I think that she wanted chicken, but we didn't have any, so I used beef for some rice. She, she cared. She never wanted this. We did But she was her pictures of him looking dead. Right? Looking almost dead. Yeah. When was that? That's your brother. Yeah. That's June 13th. Less than a month ago. You sent this picture to her and you said, he's looking like a skeleton. We need to give him more food. But you guys didn't give him more food over the next couple of weeks. You guys gave him less and more punishment and less bread and more bread with hot sauce. That's what really happened. You reached out to her and said, this is scary looking, right? You probably thought, he can barely walk. You sent a picture of his legs, right? You sent this picture of his legs to your mother right here. You sent this to her. And what'd you say? Something along the lines of, no wonder he can barely stand up or walk. Look at that. And your mother being smart and and intelligent and the smartest woman in the room, she didn't do anything about that, didn't think about taking him to the doctor, didn't think about, let we have to give him some more food, like seriously now. Instead, what do you think she did? She gave him less and more punishment until what? He ends up dead. And what did she tell the police? He was always wearing baggy clothes, so I didn't notice anything until last night. Another just blatant lie. Another blatant lie. If this was all an accident, why would she lie to us? If this was all an accident, why wouldn't she just say, we, we were having a really hard time with him. I thought he was okay. No, she knows that he looked like this. That he looked like this. Look at his face right there. That's not who your brother looked like, is it? No. He didn't look like that. Does that look like it? That looks like somebody in a casket. That you see at a funeral. That's what that looks like. And it's sickening and disgusting. And you sent this picture to her too, didn't you? You sent that to her, didn't you? Yeah. You sent that to her on July 5th. Right before the, the, the day leading up to him being found dead. Does he look like he's okay right there? No. Why'd you send that picture? I was concerned. Yeah, once again, you're not the smartest person in the room and you're concerned. Did she do anything about it? No, you know what she said? He's going to sleep in the bath all night tonight. He's sleeping in the bath all night tonight. The smartest woman in the room. He's getting the bathtub all night for punishment. Make sure the shower curtain's away so I can see him. And what happens later on that night? At some point between the time this picture is sent and the time you wake up in the morning, he dies. Because he's alive right here, right? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. He's alive. Did she tell you to and see if he blinks? Or is that a different time? That was... Is that this time or a different time? I... You smack him in the face to see if he's faking it? I was trying to see what was going on, trying to see if he would even respond if what was going on with him. I was Because to I'm you, scared. not the smartest person in the room, to you, you already know. This isn't okay. 
This is a dying person. This is your brother dying. Ooh, sorry about that. This is your brother. And he's almost dead. Another and thing. Then she she kept setting him up. Yeah. And I would come back a little later and I would notice that he would, he actually had moved himself back down. I wasn't sure if it was intentional or if he was trying to clear up his airway maybe. But, but just move it. Well, what is that supposed to mean? Well, he must be okay because he moved a little bit? That's where we're at? I wasn't He's sure. He's so far gone that you, you're like questioning if he moves a little bit, he must be okay? Come on. I was not no, sure. Where did that stuff come from? Where did that come from? Didn't your mother send you messages that said, I saw him move? I saw him. Did she send that to you? Yes. Then what does that mean to her? That it's fake? Is this fake to you? No. Is your brother lying on the floor dead? Is that fake to you? No. You know who it didn't matter to at all? You know why I didn't see shed a single tear the whole day I was there? Your mom. Did you see her cry a real tear? Yes. I saw a whole bunch of fake. You know what my job is to see? Fake. You know what I saw a whole bunch of? Fake. Because at the end of the day, this, your brother gone, that's a problem for her that's gone. She never was trying to solve this problem. She was never trying to make him into this perfect person because she's smart enough to know that isn't going to happen. He's never going to be you. He's never going to be Gabriel because he has too many problems. He's not going to be that. She's smart enough to know that. That's how we ended up here. The smartest woman in the room took advantage of you. And she asked you to do these things over and over and over again. And this is the woman you're sitting here saying she cares so much. Does she really though? She asked you to handcuff your brother, pour hot sauce in his mouth. She asked you to pour hot sauce on his penis. Your mother asked you to do those things because she cares so much. She puts you in that spot. And now you're right in the middle of an investigation in which your brother died. And this is criminal. This is a crime. Did your brother deserve to die? No. Should he be dead right now? No. Is he dead for, by the choices of others? Yeah. Who made those choices? Who made the choices for him to be dead right now? Did you make some of those choices? No. Who made those choices? Mama. Yeah. She did, didn't she? That's what's real. That's now, did you do some of the things she asked you to do? Yes. Absolutely, you did. Because I and I, I and does that put you do what was best? Does that put you in the wrong? Doing those things? Does it? It does. It puts you in the wrong. Yeah. It does. Because but you thought she knew what was best. You just said I heard you say it. I, knew, I thought she knew it. I thought maybe, maybe she said, I thought maybe it would, something, somewhere would, because she's smart, right? And she knows what she's talking about. And she loves you all. And she cares all about all of you. But when you really step back and you look at yourself and Gabriel and Timothy, we're all three of you treated the same. No. Was one of you treated like, who really cares? Who really cares? Punish him. Punish him. Punish him. Punish him. Ice bath. Hot sauce. Handcuffs. Closet. He lived in a closet. You said he spent most of his day in a closet. Peeing on himself. Pooping on himself. Eating only bread. Sometimes only with hot sauce on it. It's the hottest hot sauce you can get your hands on. That's life. He's probably relieved that he's dead. He's probably relieved because that's torture. He was tortured by you guys for months. Tortured. Why? Because he was different than you guys? Because he couldn't follow directions? Because he couldn't follow your mom's rules? Is that why? He stole food? Is it that big of a deal? Is it his food worth killing somebody over? No. That's what happened here. Over stealing food and not following rules. You said that your dad's very controlling. 
You know who was also very controlling? Your mom's controlling you without you even knowing it. That's narcissistic. Your mom controlled you and you had no idea. You thought all this stuff you're doing was for the, for, for your brother. This is going to be better for my brother. This is what's best for my brother. Those are the things you came in here saying. Is that real? I don't know what is or isn't anymore. It doesn't seem real to me. It doesn't seem real to me at all. Did you ever hit your brother? I did. Yeah. But every time I would come back, I would apologize. The bruises on him were not mean. I know that much. If, if it was anywhere, it was here. And never was a spot here, but that was from when he was a child. I think, I'm not sure which parent it was in his crib. He was laid there while his head was still fresh. Okay. And so that scar on the back of his head is... That's a old scar. Very. Basically birth. When was the last time you hit him? Probably the fifth when I was trying to see if he would respond. Okay. And where was that at? That was while he was, I think, in the tub. But where did you hit him at? The on the side of his face? Yeah. Did you ever, like, smack him or what kind of hit? It was sometimes this, and I think once or twice it was... It wasn't, like, full force, but it was, like, to try to see if he would respond. Did you ever punch him in the head? No. Because there's some evidence that somebody hit him in the head pretty hard. Where? Is his, is his skull? Because I, I know that that would never, I would never try to actually injure him at those oh, points. What really happened? How did he get that injury on his head? Did you hit him once a little harder than you maybe wanted to? It's okay, man. Yeah, I think, I remember, I kept trying to pick him up after he, after I got him out of the closet, and I think at one point he actually scratched where it, my, I pulled away, yeah. and he fell, and it, it, I think it happened several times, like he was trying to get out of my reach. Yeah. When was kind of the last time you, like, really hit his high car or something? Um, I think it was, I was trying to get him into the bath, to, for the ice bath thing. Uh, and this? Yeah, he sort of, I thought he squirmed, but maybe it was like something else. I don't know, but he slipped out of my hand and hit his head on the ground. But what part of his head did he hit? Um, it, was it the sides? I don't, I don't know the exact region because by the time I heard the thud, I had, I was literally about to turn around because I had to stop for a moment to fucking breathe. Okay. I was frustrated. I yeah. was... Listen, let me tell you... I, I never wanted to... Let me stop this. Okay. But the injury to his head, that's not what killed him, okay? Okay. But what, okay. what killed him was not eating. But when we talk about this injury to his head, I just need to know the truth of what really yeah. happened. Because what you're telling us doesn't make a lot of sense. What really happened to his head? Right. The, the, the medical people, there's a medical examiner in Kalamazoo, that's not, that isn't what caused it, but that was there. They just I noted that. So I'm just curious what really happened. I don't know. Just, Those are like a hard punch or something. When you're mad at him, I did you? If, if I ever was smacking over the head, it was with an open palm. I never... Close my fist. Maybe like on this one day when he went? No. There's never one time where you hit him in the head? No. With a fist? I would long to, but I would, I would walk away because I knew that I would, if I did something like that, I would not only regret it, but if I knew that if something like this had happened, that I had never even been able to apologize. Right. So what, where did he hit his head? You have to remember. You said it was just a couple of days ago. Yeah. Where did he hit his head? I think each time. I'm not sure. I know at one point, I think once it was on a side, another time it was the other side. I'm not sure if there was any in the back, but. Because. Okay. Where's he, where are you hitting his head? Like. Normally it was right here for me. 
Look, just uh, be for either side a little. Remember the time when you were so mad that maybe you lost a little bit and harder than that because this was a this is a serious injury. I wouldn't hurt him. Not like that. that. Not, no, not, 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 not even not if it was a on purpose. I wouldn't. If it wasn't that accidental that it happened, I don't think I would have even realized at this point until someone had probably told me. Did you ever see your mom yet? No. She never raised a hand to him that I know of. Okay. Did she ever ask you to hit him or ask you to punish him physically? No. I heard him like no. this or anything like that. No. So this what was what's your best guess on how this injury happened to the head? This is a severe injury, so it's not it's not this. It's not a slap, not even a hard slap. If it wasn't for making this head on the floors and what part of that hit the floor, that's what I don't understand. It could it might have been the back at one point, but the thing is that when it was on the ground his head would constantly lull to the side. So if it was third during after how long was it like that would lull to the side? After his head or generally deep in moments after this this when I hit it fell. Do you think of anything else about this? I don't know. There's something I should have put my foot down somewhere. I loved you so much. What would have happened? What would have happened with your mom if you put your foot down? What would have happened? I don't know. Maybe something would have been different. Maybe he would still be alive. I promised him before. The whole thing with mom and dad that, or mom and dad that I would protect him, but I failed so hard. I failed. I'm gonna step out for just a second. Okay. If you need anything, you need to use the restroom, you need to drink water. Do you have something that I could snack on? I'm going to sweat people by seeing me a problem. So what type of snack are we talking? Like chips or a little bit? I don't know what's okay for me. Really anything that's okay. Just maybe chips, yeah. Something with salt. Oh, so we can have a DVD though, because... I need to go into the DV because this phone is alright. You ready, man? Ready to go home? Oh. Uh, yeah, I guess. I got some keys from your mom for the house. No, I do not. So you're probably concerned about her twenty year old son. Oh, okay. So that's what that was about. So please take care of yourself. He's a respectful officer. He's assuring me he's going to do a medical screening. I know you got medical problems. You have to take good care of yourself. This is a manageable problem. The law says you're presumed innocent, and you know that. So, okay? So don't assume the worst. Assume the best. Okay? But take care of yourself. I'll be back in touch with you as soon as I can. Okay? I do have to go. I'm heading out of state right now, but I'm back tomorrow. Okay. And as soon as I get more concrete information, I'll come see you. Okay? Thank you. Good. Please take care of yourself. You got any property you want me to take possession of? Because you can't oh. keep anything in here. Um, my, I've got my ID. I mean, I you should keep that. Yeah, you should bring that with you. House keys. Paul doesn't know where another set is. Pardon? He doesn't know where another set of keys is. Okay. Should I give them? You want me to give them to Paul? Yes, please. Okay. If I take this, it's just yeah, I can do that. I, I'll take them. I'm oh, sure it's okay with oh, you. that's fine. Okay. No, I don't think I'll just, no, I don't bring anything. I was just cold. Please take care of yourself. I'll try. You'll be okay. I'll try. I'll try. Okay. The officer's going to take you back. I'll bring you back here. I'll tell you everything that's going on. <laughs> or what I've been instructed to do. Thank All right, thanks, sir. Appreciate it. 
Um, you're going to be charged with uh, child abuse right now. Um, I believe it's the first or second degree. So it, it is a felony. So you you won't be able to get out of jail until you see the judge, until all the warrant paperwork's down there, okay? Which will probably be tomorrow. All right. I'm sorry. No, I, I'm I'm the bearer of bad news right now. Thank you. No. Yeah, it's been a bad couple of days. Mm. I had a stroke six months ago. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Nope, you're alright. Um, I do have to handcuff you, but I'll do it in the front. Okay. Um, if my blood sugar crashes, I need that. Are you, are you diabetic? I'm reactive hypoglycemic. Okay. You take medication no, for that? No. I have a stroke stuck normally, but I didn't bring him. Yeah. For good reason. Alright. I can let you have that all the way up until the jail. But the jail won't let you bring in any kind of food or nothing. So if you want to drink it, you can always drink it now. Just worry about keep it to my stuff. All right. I'm able to keep anything down. No. The last couple days. I don't want you puking then if yes. you're going to try to drink it. I can try. We'll see. I don't know. All right. So I got plenty of cuffs on you. I'm going to do it in the front because I don't. You're not going to give me any problems. But we're going to have to go down there. Pardon? I don't have strength to do anything. I wouldn't anyway. Did y'all lose an officer? But I have to cover you down. Did y'all lose somebody? Yes, a Detroit officer was killed yesterday. I'm so sorry. Yep. Um, come this way. I need to... I want to see if there's a girl here to check your, your pockets. All right, let's come over and sit down. Relax for a second, because you're, I'm, like I said, I'm the bearer of bad news. I know. Just have a seat for a second. Relax. See my message? Yeah, I'm in the squad room. Um, would you be willing to come down here and pat her down? Um, I also need to know what the specific charge is. Um, all right. Thanks. Bye. I'm sorry. You're fine. Uh, Detective Alms coming down here. I think uh, here's one of the female detectives that was at the house yesterday. I don't remember names. I'm sorry. Mm. They say like first degree, second degree. Yes, that was Matt. All right. All right. All right, Shanda, I have to search you before you're taken to the county, okay? Shanda. Sorry. She doesn't. She shouldn't have anything on her except for ID. But I didn't want to have to do it. So. I'm sorry. You able to stand up there? It's not like I have anything left in my stomach. Yeah. 
luckily. Just a camisole, just so you know. No bra? No, I just wear these. I don't have a whole heck of a lot to hide anyway, and they're comfortable. Can you stand up straight for me? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't have anything on this to me, but. You can put it back up, with, especially with being cuffed in the front, yeah. for sure. Oh yeah, that'll help me out a lot. Um, we're going to take off now. You ready? You going to be okay? All right. No problems. I'm not going to get anymore. <laughs> All right. We're going to come right through here. Go back to my cruiser. Yeah, it's super warm, unfortunately. I'll turn the AC on when we get there. Really? I'm gonna see both. The good part is that you're handcuffed in front, so it's a little bit. It's much more comfortable. To do with your uh, oh. yeah I just gotta throw it away somewhere so you can leave it there that's fine 
sorry. Oh, you're right. I just wanted to give you this chance to, if you wanted to drink it or not. <laughs> not from all the, yeah, the gagging. All right, just hang tight for a second. We're good. Um, I wouldn't advise it not to. This is not a clean place. Oh, I'm right here, that was. Yeah. So no, you're fine. Um, I'm gonna take your temperature. This is touchless, so. Ninety six point five. Really? That's a little bit lower than normal. That's most. Which a lot of people ask, like, what the? Yeah, when they see 98 they think, oh, that's good. I'm like, no, it's not. I got your ID here. Alright. Take them cuffs off. You gotta um, put everything in this bag here, including all your jewelry. All I've got is that. Pardon? All I've got is those. Okay. Okay, I'm lightheaded. I'm sorry. That's right. Take these off. Can you just set it? Huh? Can you just set all you set? I'm trying not to. You have a shirt on underneath there? You have to take your um, sweatshirt off, but you get to keep it. It just makes it easier to search. Okay. But I get to keep it? Yes. Okay. You probably won't be able to keep the headband, though. They usually make... What about the scrunchie? Probably not. Anything that you might be able to hurt yourself with, they, they take automatically. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Belts and stuff like that, shoelaces. Alright. Oh, uh, what kind of shoes you got? They're um, basics. Alright. Here, I'll have to take them in a little bit here. But I like to have them keep it on you as long as possible. So it's because the floor is close, cold. And it's cold in here. Yep, that's why it's actually good. It's good that you got the sweatshirt. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like she's already coming. Uh, so go ahead and slip your shoes off there. Socks too, or just shoes? Just shoes. You get to keep your socks. Yep. Howdy, howdy. What's going on? What's long that? time, long time no see you. I know, right? I try not to come here. I know, right? I need you to take your headband off for me too as well. She has a scrunchie also. Yep, they gotta come out as well. Sorry. She was, wrong with you? She's feeling a little lightheaded. No, my stomach's really upset. Oh, is it? Okay. Alright. Vendor, do you have any other last names? My maiden name. What's your maiden name? Ramsey. You do drugs? No, no. I haven't been able to keep anything down since yesterday. Oh. She's had a, a rough two days. Okay. 
her uh, four, her fifteen year old son died yesterday, mm -hmm. and she's charged with child abuse. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she's she has a lot of medical problems, but she really doesn't take any medication. But she does need um, any mental health issues at all. Yeah. Uh, ADHD. ADHD. OCD. 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 Oh, OCD just means she's putting one spot over and over again, I say. Sometimes. That's actually one form. It's not the form. I, I know what OCD is. Oh, um, she does have, she says, allergy induced um, asthma. So she can't wear masks. I had a doctor's note. I didn't. I didn't bring it with me. I didn't know. I hate to tell you this. This is not school. Doctor knows. Do not work. We have our own doctors, and um, they will deal with you on that. And then she does have asthma, so she she might need a buterol as an emergency. You know. <laughs> Do you have a prescription for albuterol? Ventolin, albuterol. Yeah. Yeah. You can place your hands up there. There's gonna be harm. Let's spread your legs. Spread your legs hard. Yeah, just like the. Um, the hands, there you go. Yeah, there, there's pictures on the wall for you, my dear. Uh, oh, I'm not. That's all right. You're not, you've never done this before, so. You got a bra? No, I just wear a Ready to sit up? Can I put it down? When I get done. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you put your leg down. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ready to sit up? You take your hands down. You can look up your mouth and see your tongue. I took her temperature. It's 96. I saw it. Oh, sweet. I didn't know if we started doing that or not. What? Temperature. Yep. You can grab your shoes. I kind of made a, made a mess of the uh, booking sheet, but I fixed it. I just put stuff in the wrong spot. First, second, third, fourth. They just said the felony, which would be first, first. I believe. Mm -hmm. And I asked specifically. I said, what charge? And they said child abuse. I'm like, oh, there's like a whole bunch of them. So. Mm. <clears throat> All right. Go ahead, follow her. You can grab some shoes. 